Now, if you wanna add some background blur to a photo, your first instinct might be, I'm gonna hop into Photoshop and get this done real quick with a nice Gaussian blur. But what if I told you there's a way that you can do this in Lightroom instead? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you right now. Now, there are two different ways that you can do this, and I'm gonna show you the most simple way first, and then I'm gonna dive into my favorite way of doing things, which I'll share at the end of this video. So make sure to stick around for that. Now, the first thing that we will do is actually grab our adjustment brush because since we want to blur the background, we need to select the background of our photo. Now, what I like to do is keep auto mask checked off most of the time. This is up to you. If you're unfamiliar with auto mask, make sure to check out my other tutorial all about that up in the corner right now. But what I'm going to do is just basically create a selection of the background of my photo. I'll press O on my keyboard just so I can view that mask, making life a lot easier to know exactly what is being selected in my photo. Now, since I have auto mask checked off, I can go around this tree really easily without worrying about actually selecting any of it. It's just gonna select the blue sky in the background. It might get a little bit of the needles coming off the end there, but for the most part, it's gonna avoid selecting the tree pretty well for me. That's the power of auto mask. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue on here and let's link up once my selection is done. All right, so I'll call that a win. And now we have our whole background selected behind our subject, which in this case is our tree. Now if I press O on my keyboard, I can hide that mask. And now let's go and add these blur adjustments. Now, obviously we only have these tools right here. So how can we make a blur with just these sliders? Well, look no further than the texture and the clarity sliders. Now I'm going to bring down the texture and I'm going to bring down the clarity. Now look what happens to our photo. Let me zoom in just to give you a bit of a better view of what's going on here. Resetting both of these back to zero. Here's bringing down the texture all the way down and then bringing down the clarity all the way down. See how it sort of gets rid of the different edges and sharpness of our background and it sort of creates a fake background blur for our photo. So this is a super easy workaround to create blur in Lightroom rather than having to go into Photoshop. Now the problem with this particular example is that if you were trying to replicate actual blur like you would get with a wider aperture then you would expect to see more blur further away and less blur closer to the camera. So that's where our second method comes into play and that's with the gray gradient filter, but we're not just going to use the gradient filter. We're going to also use a sneaky little trick to make sure that you only select the background with this filter and not your subject. So let's go and do that right now. I'm going to just go and delete this example here. So now we're back to our original photo and our background doesn't have any post-processing blur on it right now. So we're going to go and add our gradient filter. Clicking on our gradient filter, we'll click and drag down like so. You can press O on your keyboard to view your mask. Anything that is red, once again, is going to be affected by your blur. Now, if you want no blur in the foreground, then you want to make sure no red is there. And the easiest way you can tell this is this line right here is going to be the finishing point of your gradient. This line over here is going to be the starting point. Anything that is beyond this line will be 100% affected, while everything between this line and this line will begin to gradually get softer. As you bring these two lines closer together, your gradient becomes more and more hard, which works well if you're right against a horizon, but it doesn't work well for this particular effect since we wanna have a nice transition between 100% blur and then no blur. So let's just go and create a soft gradient like this that sort of tapers off nicely in the middle of our frame here. Now, since our red highlight represents what's going to be affected, as you can see, our subject, AKA the tree is currently red. So that's not good. We need to fix this. So what you can do is up in the mask option, we can go to the brush setting, clicking on brush. This is not the adjustment brush, but instead you're able to edit the mask of your gradient filter. So going to the erase option, since we want to remove some of this mask, we'll make sure auto mask is checked off. So then we can only select our subject. We won't select any of the background. We're going to go and just paint over our tree or whatever subject you have in your photos. It could be a person, a, a car, or your pet dog. I don't know, whatever, it, whatever your photo is about, this is what you're going to paint over. And in this case, it's a tree in my photo. So once again, I'll just go through this quickly here and let's link up once I'm finished. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me right here. Now we have all of the red removed from our subject. 
And now we can go and apply this blur to just the background because our subject or the tree is no longer being affected. Pressing O on our keyboard to hide that mask. We can now go and do the same process as before, dragging down the texture and then bringing down the clarity. Now this time, if I zoom in, check out a little bit of a difference here. Now we have a really strong blur in the furthest away background, but then we have no blur up close to the camera. So this creates an awesome effect that basically emulates the natural background blur that you would find in camera. Now, although it's not the same by any means, it does sort of give a similar feel by transitioning from 100% blur to a little bit less of a blur as you get closer and closer to the camera. Now you can adjust your gradient as needed to adjust which areas are really blurry and which areas are not, but you can start to see how powerful the gradient filter can be for this particular type of blur. If I'm using this type of adjustment, I will only use the gradient filter just because it does look so much more realistic and it doesn't look overdone. If you don't wanna have a super strong blur, of course you can just reduce the texture and clarity sliders and the less of an adjustment you have here, the more subtle your background blur will appear. So once you're happy with that, just click done and then now you've successfully added a background blur to your photo. Let's go look at that before and after. Looking at our before and after here in our before image, if I zoom in, you can see that our photo was relatively blurred, but it is quite sharp compared to our after, which we've softened and we've applied that blurring filter in a nice transition gradient, starting with a high blur up in the top and then less and less blur as you go down. So looking at our foreground, they're pretty much exactly the same between the two images, but then as you go towards the background, further up into the sky especially, you see how there's details in the clouds here, but everything is blurred out along the sky in this image because that was affected 100% by our gradient filter. So depending on how you set up your particular filter or your adjustment brush, your before and after is gonna look a little bit different, but you can see how it adds a nice subtle blur or glowing look to the background of your photo without having to ever go into Photoshop and deal with layer masks and things like that. You can do it all with some selective adjustment tools here in Lightroom. All right, so if you love editing photos in Lightroom, then why haven't you subscribed to this channel already? Because I talk about Lightroom all the time and I also love talking about Photoshop too so if you're into either of those things like I am then hit that subscribe button and let's hang out. Other than that my name is Brennan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.